YouTube, it's Chris. Welcome back to the channel. I have a Duma OS optimization guide for you guys. A lot of you were asked. Here we are. Duma OS. Thank you so much for sending me out the NetDuma R2. I really appreciate it. Sorry I haven't done this video yet, but here we are. Guys, this is going to apply for the XR300, the XR450, the XR500, the XR1000, the Duma OS, um, NetDuma R1 and R2, and anything that has Duma OS in it. It doesn't matter the fact that we're actually using the R2 for this video. Uh, they all have the same settings and features, just the bigger, beefier ones have the better chipset CPU and can handle more devices better. So either or guys, these things are fantastic. I'm going to show you guys how to region lock. I'm going to show you how to Use quality of service, device manager, uh, you know, open NAT type. Um, also, you know, I'm going to show you guys how to port forward, all that cool stuff. Everything's going to be included in here and to try to get you guys in low ping lobbies. So your ISP's modem router, you need to keep this thing. We need to use this thing. This thing is going to pass through all of the internet through to the router with one cable. We disable Wi-Fi on it completely. That is our Duma OS router and that is our ISP's router. Everyone will have a slightly different ISP router. We need to use that with one Ethernet cable that's going to go straight to the Duma OS. We want the Duma OS to actually control everything. So all the Wi-Fi devices and all the Ethernet devices for quality service to work properly. So for now, what I want you guys to do first is just plug in your ISP's router directly to the PC as you can see here. So once you've got your actual just ISP's modem router plugged in directly without using the Duma OS router yet, what I want you guys to do is go straight to the desktop. Right? You know, type Windows key R and I want you to type um, CMD, okay? And then after you've typed CMD, so Windows key R, CMD, and press enter. Then I want you to type IP config, right? you type IP config, look down for the default gateway. You don't need the GUID, you just need the actual numbers here. The IP address. The IP address is what we need to access the actual, your ISP's modem router. Um, and we wanna configure those settings here. So the easiest thing to do is just like highlight this and press control C on the keyboard. So control C, and then go to a um, web browser, right? Um, anyone, doesn't really matter, okay? And I want you to press control V and then that should be the IP address there, so you can enter that. And now you should actually be able to log into your router's um, uh, page, so we can actually configure the settings. Now, if you haven't set this up yet, or you're unsure, just look at the back of the modem router, and it should have the um, default username and password. If this doesn't work and someone else has tampered with it, you may need to do a factory reset on your factory modem router. Generally, at the back, there's a little button you can press to do a factory reset, or sometimes you need um, you know, a little, little hairpin or something like that to, to get in there and actually go ahead and reset that. And once you've reset that, it should default back to the default one. So go ahead and do that. So once you've gone ahead and done that, logged in, every modem router like a uh, factory from your ISP is going to look a little bit different. Okay, I'm using a Netcom that was provided with me. Some of you guys have, might have a Telstra router. Some of you guys might have like a, a Netgear. It might be all completely different. Go in there, okay, and once you're logged in, go ahead and disable Wi-Fi. So as you can see, I've disabled um, Wi-Fi on the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz. It's like completely disabled. The reason being is because we actually want to use Wi-Fi on the Dumo OS router, so quality of service or the anti-buffer boot feature can work and we can actually use device manager to control bandwidth for all devices in the house. And to control bandwidth for all devices in the house, all that's gonna happen is your ISP's modem router, which is this thing here that I have, it's going to pass all the internet straight through one cable, one ethernet cable to the Duma OS router. And then the Duma OS router is going to do control all the devices in the house. And that needs to be Wi-Fi as well as all your ethernet devices, etc. Also quick tip, it should already be enabled by default, but make sure you have a UPnP enabled on here, universal plug and play. That's going to be really useful. So just make sure that's enabled. And if your modem router has quality surface built into it, make sure you turn that off because we're actually going to be using that feature, which is called anti-buffer bloat on the Duma OS. Instead, you don't want to have it on both. It's going to be a problem. So just disable it on this one as well. Now, some of you guys might not have quality of service on your router and that's fine. Just don't worry about it. Okay, and another thing we want to look for, and this is not the case for all ISP modem routers, but sometimes there's something called bridged mode. And what bridged mode does is, if you can enable bridge mode on your modem router that's from your ISP, it'll basically just disable everything on there and all it will do is put out internet um, to the other router, okay? Um, just with one ethernet cable. 
Now, I've worked with a few different modem routers from the ISP. Some of them have it, some of them don't. And sometimes the ones that do have it, it will enable um, you know, uh, pass through or bridge mode and it will just completely bug out. It just, just won't work or it'll bug out. And if that happens to you and you can't get it working um, with um, the bridged mode, don't worry about it. Just do factory reset of the router again if you can't access it again. Do the same steps, log in, disable QoS if you can, and disable um, Wi-Fi completely. And then you can just have one Ethernet port coming out of your modem router, like the, the ISP's modem router, straight to the Duma OS router. Now on this modem router from the ISP, specifically um, bridge mode gets a little bit funky, so I'm not going to be putting it into bridge mode, but you guys can look into that if you like. Um, if your router supports it and it works ideally, because Technically speaking, if you enable bridge mode, it'll actually disable Wi-Fi and QoS and all the other features on the um, modem router anyway. And then it will just pass everything through uh, through the Ethernet or the WAN port, which would go straight to your um, Duma OS. So anyway, let's get the Duma OS up and started. Now, just to let you guys know, it might be a good idea to write down this IP address or bookmark it because um, when we actually go ahead and plug in our Duma OS now, when we go to IP config, you guys aren't going to see this IP address now. Now you're going to see a different IP address for the actual Duma OS router. So if you wanted to go back and access this, you would need to keep this saved. So just go ahead and bookmark it just to be safe. Just call this like ISP router. That'd be easy enough. Okay. I'll just call it that. So that way we can access it later if we need to. So just to show you guys what it looks like, we have the uh, power, the ISP's modem router. Okay. And we also have the ethernet cable. Some of you guys might be on coax and might look completely different depending if you're on fiber or depending, it doesn't really matter. So we've got one ethernet port with a short ethernet cable from our ISP's modem router coming straight to the WAN port or the internet port of the Doom OS router. Okay, straight into there. Should say WAN or internet. It says internet as you guys can see, right? After that, got power so we've got power to that uh, the doom os router and then now we have like the connection to our pc which is an ethernet port directly from the pc so basically what we're going to do is we're going to have all the wi-fi devices and all the ethernet devices connected to here now so this can control quality of service and the device manager and everything like that properly okay now we have the doom os plugged in and everything configured correctly on that end so let's go back into CMD. I could just retype it in here, but not to confuse you guys, just to, so you guys remember Windows key R to run, the run command, or you can simply type search R-U-N. Okay, it's there. Then we want to go to CMD, so type CMD, then press OK. Now right here in the command prompt, we need to type IP config. And now we should have a different default gateway here. Okay, as you can see, it's a different IP address because that's our Duma OS IP address. So you want to press Control C, and then go straight to this page here, control V and enter. And this is the first time we're setting this thing up. All right. So we'll go ahead and log in and set this up. Now the password and username should be at the bottom. So we just have to go through the terms and things like that. Then we'll go ahead and press start. So I'll make this a little bit bigger so you guys can see. Go ahead and press start. And then internet connection detected. Awesome. We go more WAN options next. Okay. Um, this is probably what I would prefer for you guys to we could do this now or we could do this later I'll show you guys how to do this later too but the best thing to do is just go ahead and do a speed test oh, I'm actually not able to do a speed test because we have to get through this setup screen which is a little bit annoying so we're going to come back to this I think would be best so we'll just leave it at default for now go ahead and press next and here's where you want to go ahead and set up the username and password so um which is great so we actually don't need to go back of the router to do that so call it whatever you want for just the purpose of this video, I'm just going to call it admin and call it admin, 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 admin. Okay, but you probably want to set a proper password just so you guys know. Um, and then you want to go ahead and select your region. I'm in Australia, so that's done. Go ahead and press submit. Is where we can set up the Wi-Fi password details. Okay, guys. So I'm actually going to type in my own right now just so that um, all the devices in the house connect and you guys can see the device manager. So I'll pause this part of the video. So now we're going ahead and set up the Wi-Fi. Now we we'll just go ahead and select our time zone, which is pretty straightforward. So I'm actually Sydney region in Australia, GMT plus 10. And then I'm going to uncheck 
Doom OS to the data collection. I'm not really into that kind of stuff. So yeah, go ahead and press next. Um, and then it should give us a, a little tour. So it's like it needs to load up. So we just have to wait a little bit, I guess. And that's going to give you guys a nice tour. You can go through the tour if you want, but I'm just going to show you the features you need to know about. Okay. And how to set this thing up correctly. Um, now I can actually access um, Google. So now we probably want to go ahead and do the speed test, right? Is it just a generic one that comes with Google would be totally fine. Now you want to do a speed test here and also you want to be aware of, you want to um, also know probably the worst time of the day doing your speed test because we want to set up quality of service or how Duma OS calls it anti uh, buffer bloat or in this case they call it QoS congestion control on my XR500 they call it anti buffer bloat but anyway basically you want to know the sort of like the worst time of the day internet because sometimes you can get congestion in the area generally when everyone gets home from work after about 8 p.m that's generally when you want to do a speed test and just check out like the worst time of the day that you get and you want to set it to that you want to set it to the worst time of the day so quality service or like anti buffer bloat or whatever it's called congestion control actually works properly because if we set these numbers incorrectly it may not work properly to, to you know set up like the anti buffer bloat stuff so for me worst time of the day it's generally 92 and 28 so i'm actually going to go ahead and we're going to set our speeds to 92 28 so go to qos here all right go to congestion control and then three little lines here and go ahead and set bandwidth speeds okay and then go ahead and change speeds so I'm going to go through that now. Um, like I said, it was 92.28. So worst time of the day, 92 and 28 upload. You guys are all going to be different. Depends where you live and depends on the, the line that you have and the quality of connection um, and the actual ISP service that you're paying for. Um, while I've got you here guys now, just to let you guys know, there is no special uh, Windows optimizations you can do for lower uh, network latency or lower ping honestly there isn't there's there's nothing you can do it is your actual line on where you live and it's the service that your isp provides you so if you guys ever have like packet loss or bad ping either you've got bad routing to the servers sometimes changing isp can help that sometimes if you place servers further away using a gaming vpn can help if you place servers relatively close to you a gaming vpn won't get you lower ping because um, it's already routed the best way. So just to let you guys out, if you guys have lots of packet loss, it actually might be an issue with the line or the service that the ISP is providing you. There's no special magic. As far as any network tweaks, we can do some stuff here, which we're doing with the Duma OS, and I'm showing you guys that now. But as far as any other optimizations, they, they, they don't do anything, um, you know. So anyway, so we'll go ahead and press next here, okay? And then we'll save that and done. Press close, okay? And then what we'll go ahead and do, make sure good put is enabled. So that's great, okay? Now with congestion control, you can do always, right? So this is quality of service. But what you actually want to do is go auto enable. And here's why. The way this works is this thing here. So that is bandwidth allocation. You can do it for upload and download. Now that's completely separate from congestion control, which is quality of service, okay? So congestion control quality of service will reserve upload and download speed bandwidth for when you actually go ahead in game. So as a general rule of thumb, I like to do about 10%. So I'm gonna set this to about 90 and I'm gonna set this to about 90. Now, because I don't have the greatest upload speed, I'm probably gonna set the um, upload a little bit more. I might just go 80 here. Like if you guys, you know what I mean? You want to reserve a little bit, especially because when you game, generally, um, you know, it's upload speed that you're using. So I just like to reserve a little bit more because my upload speed is not the greatest. It's only like 30 up. So I'm reserving about eight here, as you can see. I got about 30 up roughly. I'm reserving about roughly eight for gaming. And with the download, it doesn't really matter that much, right? And we go ahead and that's already applied. Now, like I said, you always want to use auto enable because if we have a set it to always, right? And I go ahead and do a speed test. It's actually going to cap our speeds down all the time, right? And you don't want it to do that. 
what you wanted to do is you wanted to set it to auto enable. So when you're just generally browsing the web and downloading stuff and downloading your games, this won't actually kick in. But as soon as you um, actually open a game, it will automatically detect it. And that's when it will kick in. And that's when you want it to kick in because you want to get your full upload and download speed when you're actually downloading stuff or uploading stuff, if that makes sense. But when you're gaming, that's when you want this to kick in, if that makes sense. So anyway, with device manager or bandwidth allocation, what I actually like to do first is I like to go ahead to device manager and figure out all the devices in the in the area so that I'm connected to. So right now I've only got one PC connected and I've got everything else as um, like a Wi-Fi. So these are the Wi-Fi devices in the house. Now this will get bigger. So the best thing to do is connect everything that you would possibly use in the house first right i do have a couple of the devices but just for this video video we'll use this so um well i can tell you this is my phone so go ahead in here and just go ahead and set this to my phone right cool and then this one here this is actually my um uh this would be my kid's phone so kid's phone Pretty straightforward, just so you can keep up with everything that's going on, if that makes sense. So, and this one here, this is actually my smart TV, believe it or not. I don't know why it's calling it that. Smart TV. I wanted that to be caps. Okay, and we've got smart TV. And then I believe this one is my um, webcam phone. Something like that. Anyway, that's fine. Right now, this is set to a phone, so make sure set this to phone. Okay, um, this one is a phone as well, so I'll open this up. Um, I'm going to set this to a phone because this is actually a phone, believe it or not. Um, and then this one is a TV, so you can actually set it to smart TV just so you can keep up with everything that's going on. So we should scroll down, and hopefully, yeah, we've got TV here. Okay, and then this one is actually a phone too, so I'm going to set this one to phone. All right. So scroll down and set this to phone. Now, here we go, land. Now, if you guys aren't sure on what's what, so say you've got a bunch of different lands connected and you're not sure, what you can do is, so say you've got two, but you want to name the different PCs, just go ahead and find the actual like IP address, right? And then you can do the same thing in um, Windows key R and type CMD and then type IP config on the actual PC that you want to know what it is and look for like the Mac address. So that'll be generally IPv4 address, like most of you guys. So as you can see, 192.168.77.168 and the same numbers are here. So that's how I know this is my gaming PC. And say I had my streaming PC connected and I wasn't sure which one was which, I could go in here and find out the IPv4 address to find out, okay, which PC is which because I'm not sure right that's probably the easiest way to do it if that makes sense guys so you can name the different devices if you had different lan things connected so you know i'd call this gaming pc which is the only one i have connected right now but you know if i had the streaming pc connected i would just simply do that find the mac address uh, so find the ip address um and then go ahead and like link it and then be able to name it to what it is so then i would have gaming pc and streaming pc but like i said I don't have that connected right now. It doesn't matter for the purposes of this video. Um, let's go to quality of service again now. Now we've named all our devices, okay? So if you guys see something like that here, try to connect everything in the house. Um, and if it's connected or disconnected, or you're never gonna connect it again ever, you can actually just go ahead and delete it, that's fine. So I've just gone ahead and deleted it. Um, but yeah, just make sure you have everything connected because it's if you add another device later, you'll have to go back in here and it's going to screw up all the bandwidth allocations again because you'll go ahead and set a number but it'll add another device and it will change these numbers here if that makes sense so yeah now i don't like this part here so click on the three little dots here where it says bandwidth allocation and go ahead and select devices so we can actually see what the hell is going on all right and once you've gone ahead and clicked on this now we should see all the devices that are connected so ideally what i would want to do is i would want my gaming pc to have most of the allocation don't max it out all the way because if you max it out all the way when you're downloading a big file no one else would be able to use the internet it will kind of just cap it all out if you use all the bandwidth so it's just good maybe to leave like you know mobile farms and things like that give them around five to eight percent okay and just for reference um if i had my gaming pc and streaming pc connected here i'd probably have both of these at 40 um and then the rest would be around about eight 
roughly if that makes sense to you guys so it just depends so for, for now i'm just gonna leave these at, at this this should be like a totally fine value but yeah um so like because i want the streaming pc to have priority as well as the gaming pc that makes sense so i'm just going to set that to that and update distribution but don't yes yeah, set this all the way up and set these devices to zero because people will literally when you download some a big file they won't be able to connect to the internet it'll just time them out because this is giving you basically full priority like the main priority and that's what we want so that's for the upload speed we have to do the same for the download speed as well so we're going to go ahead and do that so i'm just going to set this to 80 and then press update distribution so make sure you press update distribution on both and that's that taken care of so now we have all our devices named that are connected in the house we've given ourselves um, full priority for uploading and downloading okay so we've got the majority of the priority here and also what we've done is we've gone ahead and set up our congestion control so the congestion control basically one we've got priority two the congestion control when other people are using the internet in the house, it's going to always reserve that bandwidth for gaming. And this can help um, buffer bloat quite a little bit. So now we'll do a little bit of a buffer bloat test and see if there's actually um, a big difference on and off. Now, there probably won't be a huge difference on and off right now because I don't have all the other devices in the house using internet. That's generally when you'll see your buffer bloat come up, right? And then that's why this... Uh, feature helps a lot so at the moment the other devices in the house aren't doing much they might just be pinging back and forth the server a little bit but they're not actually in use so we might not see a huge difference so ideally probably what we want to do first is completely disable it okay so i'm going to uncheck good put and disable qos okay just so we can do a buffer bloat test before and after there's a couple of different uh, buffer bloat tests you can do. Um, I used to always, I haven't done this in quite a while. I used to use DSL reports. It was pretty nice. Um, there's also another one called um, buffer bloat test by waveform, I believe. Yeah, this one, a lot of people started to use this one now. Uh, but um, I'll, I'll do both, but we'll, we'll stick with DSL reports at the moment. So just go ahead to DSL reports and go to speed test. Um, I'm on um, basically gigabyte fiber. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and check that. Okay, and now we're gonna do a buffer bloat test, um, you know, with our upload and download um, without quality of service um, on. And then we'll turn it, um, then we'll turn it so off and then we'll turn it on and we'll see if there's like a, a nice little difference. But like I said, we might not see a huge difference because other devices in the house aren't using the internet right now. Um, but this can actually help uh, buffer bloat quite a lot. And um, buffer bloat, I'm not gonna go into depth on explaining um, it but basically the lower the better and if you have bad buffer bloat spikes in your um, upload speed or just even in your connection in general that's the type of stuff that you can get shot behind walls um and just really bad like sync with the server bad hit registration stuff like that so you want your you want your buffer bloat to be down quite a little bit now unfortunately mine's not bad um because uh, the quality of line i have um is quite good and no other devices in the house are actually using um the internet right now but if they were right now we might see the buffer bloat spike up quite a little bit so i'm sorry guys that it's not actually showing worse right now like generally on my older isp it was worse and this did help quite a lot but anyway let's do the test on both so um i might just like take a quick screenshot of results and share what i like to do is i like to go here and just check um here here and here so um we've got like 10 23 12 all right so that's just nice to see. I might just take a quick screenshot of that. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and do one on this, this website too, because why not? All right, so that's the test done there. So I'm going to take a screenshot of this and just keep print screen. All right, um, and just scrolling down here. Um, there are heaps of different routers that you can use to, to help buffer bloat. And honestly, like I would say the Duma OS or like the Netgear are probably just the easiest for gamers. And also region lock is really nice as well. We're going to get to that region locking for matchmaking games. If the matchmaking keeps putting you in high ping logins, lobbies, you can actually stop that from happening, which is really nice because we don't generally have server browsers in most modern we don't have server browsers in most modern games now. But anyway, I've taken a screenshot of that. Let's go back to our router settings, okay? Now we want to enable QoS again. So I'm going to enable good put, okay? And I'm going to make sure uh, QoS is actually enabled here, okay? So go ahead and we'll wait for that to apply. I'm just going to check again. So we have good put on and just quality service is enabled, 
okay and our bandwidth speeds is set um like i said i set to worst time of the day and i've got like reserved here okay and auto enable like i said okay um now let's go ahead and we'll do the test again so we go speed test gigabyte fiber and we'll see if we see um hopefully hopefully we'll see a difference here but we might not like i said because i don't have other devices in the house using the internet right now so doing this test, I actually did get a bit of an improvement on the buffer bloat. Before we only got an A, now we've got an A+. Plus, so that's nice. It actually looks like it's done something. To have a quick look at the results and share. It looks like that might be slightly lower. But like I said, guys, I mean, there, um, there aren't other devices in the house using the internet right now. So I'm going to have a quick look in that 12 there. And what have we got? We've got 11 there. So that helped a little bit, which is nice. But like I said, it's more going to help when lots of other devices are using the internet. Right. Now let's go ahead and we'll go ahead and do this test again too. So I might just go back and then back into the website because that might be easier. I'm going to go ahead and run this test again and we'll see what results we get. Okay, we actually did see improvement here. Now it says your latency did not increase under load. So I'll take another screenshot of this and I'll try to compare... Them. Although, like I said, I haven't really used this test much yet, so I'm not entirely sure how it actually works. So this was the first one that we did. Um, it was 10, 8, 3, and we've got 13, um, 0, 0. Okay, so that did help a little bit. Um, and I think you can look at like jitter and stuff like that. So we had 1.4, 3.5, and 4.6. And here we've got 4.1, 2.3, 1.8. So they actually did help. Um, a little bit which is cool to see so i'm glad you guys could see that difference but like i said you'll see more of a difference when lots of people are using the line so that is actually doing its job um, and so that's less likely we're going to get shot behind walls and bad hit registration to give us slightly better um you know like a network connection as far as game priority and stuff like that with less interruptions so there's other stuff that we can actually do on this router which is really exciting so i want to show you the other stuff that we can do right now Cool little ad blocker feature, although I wouldn't use this, I just use uBlock Origin personally, but I mean, this might be nice for maybe YouTube videos on your phone. I don't know if it would actually work, but it's worth a shot. Hybrid, BVN, lots of stuff that I generally don't use. But in saying that, I would like you to guys to go to network settings, and then I would like you to go ahead and make sure UPnP is on, but it should be on uh, by default so just go to UPnP and just make sure that's set on by default and if you want to go ahead and change any of your Wi-Fi settings go ahead and do that but um the factory settings out of the box are, are pretty good I mean personally I disable IPv6 because I'm not using it um, on the network settings and also the the network itself and I would disable 5 gigahertz I only use 2.4 gigahertz because um, a lot of the Wi-Fi devices in the house are quite further away. 2.4 shines further away. 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi shines when you're closer to the router. It's way better, faster connection and better ping with 5 gigahertz. But you have to make sure the device is fairly close. You guys should never use Wi-Fi for gaming anyway. Use an Ethernet cable, please. But anyway, um, another cool thing is port forwarding, which you can do for... Uh, like I'll show you guys as an example. If you ever have problems connecting to game servers sometimes this can help generally you don't have to do this if you have upnp enabled so generally i don't bother anymore but say you wanted to we could go ahead and add these to make sure so let's let's go ahead and do that with call of duty so um call of duty um what would they be called uh port forwarding so you want to go to like the direct site Okay, so for example, this would be the actual Activision site, all right? You wouldn't want to go to any other website or trust any other source. So go ahead and find the game that you play. Most of you guys play Warzone. So personally, I would add it for PC, PlayStation, and Xbox, right? So you've got TCP ports, right, and UDP ports. UDP is actually used for the game. I'd probably say TCP would just be for like the in-game menu and stuff like that, okay? So we'd want to go ahead and add them all. So just as an example, we'll start by adding a TCP port, okay? So let's go ahead and add this one, okay? So you go to the network settings, we go add a rule, and then we would call this, I don't know, uh, one, it doesn't really matter. Um, and also we would want to come incoming ports and outcoming ports, it'd just be the same. Um, and destination IP, we'd want that set to all of them. So we could probably just leave that as is. And then, um, it, does it let us choose? To, oh, there we go. There we go. Set this one to TCP. All right. 
and then press save. So that'll make sure you can always connect to that no matter what, there's always gonna be throughput. But it looks like it wants us to put the IP address in, which is a little bit annoying because what if you want it on multiple PCs? Um, it looks like we're gonna have to set it to just this PC. So once again, let's go to CMD um, and then go to IP config. And uh, if we updated the router firmware, it, we might not actually have to do this. We could probably just select the devices that are already connected. And I'm gonna show you guys how to do a firmware update um, soon anyway. So we're actually, our default IPv4 address is 168. So it's 192.168.77. You guys can see that, or 168. So I'll just go 168, 168, and then save. Okay. And that'll be that one done. TCP so that's set to our actual gaming PC so if you guys aren't entirely sure we can just go to device manager again right and we can go to the device that we named gaming PC gaming PC and then we just check there 168 as you can see here so that's the address so we're good let's go back to network settings and um Port forwarding. Okay, cool. So now we want to add a um, another one. So sometimes they'll have more than just like one port, if that makes sense. So for example, so this actually has a range of ports. So for this one, okay, because there's a comma there, we add another TCP port here. So let's go add rule. Okay, and it was 168. And then we'll name this like two. It doesn't really matter. So this is the start of the port, but there's also an end of the port because there's a whole different range. So we need to copy this end here, all right? If it would actually let me click on the mouse. There we go. And then we paste that here, okay? Um, I think I didn't copy the full number because this website's acting a little bit weird, but there we go. Okay, so that's it there. Start, end, and this is TCP, remember? So just set this to TCP. So that's done. Now we've got to go ahead and do the same thing again for the UDB ports. So I think you guys get the point here. I'll just do this one. Actually, no, I'll, this one would be, I'll, I'll do it again just to show you guys. Right, I'll just do two more. So I'll name this 3168. That was my IP address, yep, cool. Um, and 374, so that one's 374. And this is UDP, okay? So make sure you throw that to UDP. We'll go back here and this one, uh, I want to choose one that has two numbers just so you, can, you guys can understand because sometimes you have one number where you have to paste twice and sometimes you have two numbers which is within a range of numbers if that makes sense. So we'll just control C and we'll add this one. Four, we have 168. Paste there and there's also another one which is 4380. So 4380. Okay, so that's done. We're within that range. Um, 4378 to 4380 even though it is only kind of like two numbers but anyway it doesn't matter other ones are within a higher range like so 27000 to 27031 so that's an extra like 30 or 31 um, but yeah you guys get the point um, and then I'll paste that there we've already done that and this is you make sure we set this to UDP Okay, set it to UDP, save, done. So that's how you do port forwarding. It's not a bad idea to do it. I, I stopped the bothering because UPnP usually takes care, if this is on, it usually takes care of that. But if you feel like you are having problems connecting to servers with matchmaking, sometimes this isn't a bad thing to do. You can do this for Fortnite, you can do this for Apex. You just, just go ahead and Google it and find, you know, the actual um, website dedicated website of the developer that actually says the ports that they use and just go ahead and add them and if you play all Call of Duty's you could add all of these if you really wanted to it would be a pain in the ass but if you really wanted to you could I did that once uh, honestly it took a long time and it actually really didn't make a difference for me because UPnP was working fine so I just didn't bother when I updated firmware and started fresh again with my settings and I had to do a factory reset so in saying that what more can we do? Region lock. So let's go to region lock. So what I like to do, um, I'm going to show you guys a few different ways you can do it. Region lock geo filter. Why would you want to do this? Because games have matchmaking nowadays. And a lot of the time, if you're a good player, rather than finding other good players in your region, which it may not be able to, it might put you in a higher ping lobby um, and either punish you with higher ping or punish you with better players with higher ping. Now, this isn't gonna bypass skill-based matchmaking or anything like that, but it's just gonna basically try to lock you in a certain region, so you're not always gonna be playing on high ping when you search for a match in your game. Doesn't matter what game you play, if it has matchmaking, this is useful. 
Um, but anyway, so we're going to skip the tour because I'm not going to bother. So as a start, we can just like the, the, the generic way to do it, okay, is we just go ahead and we just go. There's, a, there's lots of different stuff you can do in here. You can like block certain areas. You can do this. You can do that. Honestly, like save yourself the hassle. I'll just show you guys what I do. But this is the other way to do it. Um, you just go find the gaming device. So you want to select gaming PC. Um, if you're not sure, go show all devices and find the one that you named that's like your gaming PC. Go ahead and press next. And what's cool about this is it has a list of different things. So for me here, I'll just select Call of Duty and then next and then um, continue. So we have like filtering mode on. So what you can actually do is if, so see right now, so say we're actually not living here. So what you actually might want to do is might actually want to set it to where we're actually living right now that would be a good idea because otherwise it's going to be trying to be locking us in here so you click this set home and then if it would actually let me um zoom out a little bit more that'd be really useful we'd be over here um and there's going to be a way to actually be able to see what's going on here we go okay so set home i'm actually in sydney so i'm roughly over here it doesn't really matter too much but i'm roughly over here and that is done okay and i've got filtering mode on now what's cool about this guys is um when you go ahead and collect connect to a lobby um or an actual game if you go down to like auto ping right here it's actually going to show you the ip address of the server that you're connected to and it'll also show your ping um and roughly where the server is which is really convenient so if the in-game ping counter is lying to you or you're not sure you can actually check it in here when you're connected to a match and this will do its thing so it's kind of a cool thing to go and see and now if you guys are struggling to find a match because of the lock region you can turn filtering mode off and then actually still see what's going on here so say it took me way too long to find a match which is really annoying because not many people are playing in this region and it wanted to connect me over here like or over here i could still have that filtering mode off so i was actually able to connect to those servers and i'll actually be able to see here now generally as a rule of thumb i would probably i don't know for me because the servers are close uh, you can play around with this a little bit and also it's not a bad idea to just up ping assist a little bit but i'll show you guys what i actually run because i actually don't use this um, I actually like to do like a full hard region lock honestly like I'm a lot more sort of controlled so what we're going to do here is I'm going to um, check on this and, and delete this and I'll show you guys what I do so you don't actually need to set it for individual games or anything like that what I do is I go to the device manager this is how I do it but there's many other different ways you can do this okay so you know look around on the internet if you want to look at different ways but this has been the best way for me personally okay I like to change my gaming PC to an actual console and here's why, because it lets you actually lock it completely. Whereas if you didn't select this as a console, it wouldn't let you lock it completely, like for absolutely everything. Uh, I don't know why, it's just how it is. But anyway, just go ahead and select this. I'm going to select this as a PlayStation or an Xbox. It doesn't really matter. Um, I'll just go ahead and select this as a PlayStation and press apply. Okay, so now this is going to be considered as a PlayStation. Now, if I go into GeoFilter here, and if I go ahead and add a device so we've deleted all the other devices we'll add a device go ahead and show all devices i've called it gaming pc go next now we've got a sort of like a different menu here and now i can go choose manually and just press continue and then have filtering mode on press continue and finish what i like to do is because i know the servers are in new south wales like sydney where i'm actually living and i always want to play in those servers when i don't want to play high ping lobbies i like to set this to a thousand it is all personal preference and i do ha like to have ping assist to about 50 okay but you might have to play around with this depending on the game that you play and depending on where the servers are if a dedicated servers were further away like over here this is not going to help you at all um if anything it might actually I mean, if the games do do non-dedicated servers like peer-to-peer, -peer, you might end up just always playing the peer-to-peer -peer servers. But for me, like the server is roughly around here anyway, so this is what I always want to lock. Now, sometimes when it takes too long, too it, it takes too long for me to find a lobby, no one's playing. I will just manually um, on my other monitor go in here and turn this off, um, just so I can get a lobby. 
But then what happens is if I end up keep getting higher ping lobbies, I'll just turn this back on when I'm searching for a game. So that's how I like to use it. And that kind of region locks like everything. Now, just as a heads up guys, um, spending where you're living, if you do use it this method where you actually set your device as a console, whether it be PlayStation or Xbox, okay? Wait for that to load. If you do do this um, and you have the geo filter on, there's some games that I can't actually connect to or like open up. Right, so for example, like Overwatch, the dedicated server's like somewhere around here. If I open Overwatch, it actually won't let me connect to a server at all, right, with these settings. So I, for something like if I was to play Overwatch, I'll just turn this off, okay? So it's just a heads up, like you might not want to always have this on if you're playing other games, but say for example, like I play lots of Call of Duty and I always want to be in the dedicated servers, um, I just leave it on. But just keep that in mind, if you have this left on, if you ever have problems connecting to some certain game servers or certain things, just go ahead and turn that off. Now I'll show you guys how to do a firmware update on this thing, which would be fairly useful. Hang on, what happened with my bandwidth allocation? Did that not save? Let's have a have a look at this for some reason that wasn't was that not updated was that not saved let's see um quality of service okay i don't know why this got reset but anyway um yeah just maybe go check over your settings um you know wouldn't be a bad idea i don't have that issue on my xr 500 so I'm, I'm not gonna edit this part of the video out and i think you guys should see that i don't know why that got reset but anyway that that's set now that's set that's set, done. Geo filter set, cool. I'll show you guys how to do a um, firmware update. Um, on this thing, sometimes it's a little bit different. If you have an XR500 or XR1000, um, you wanna go on the Netgear website. So, you know, just type like um, XR1000 firmware and just you go straight to the website. And sometimes you go ahead to downloads and just go ahead and download um, like uh, the latest uh, firmware update. Okay, and then you get a file and then with the file, you can go ahead and add the file in here. I think with the Doom OS, it might actually be all through the servers. Let's have a look here. Okay, no, we actually do need the file here. So what we'll do is, what is this thing? This is a NetDoom R2. So NetDoom R2 firmware. Okay, and you guys, I definitely recommend doing this. We probably should have done this first, but guys do this, just update it to the latest and then go check over all your settings again, set it all up and then done. Ideally, we probably should have done that at the beginning of the um, video. So current firmware they recommend is 3.0.394. So we'll go ahead and grab that. We've got an R2 here. So if you've got an R1 here, grab that or, oh cool, they've got the XRs here. That's really convenient actually really really convenient but anyway we'll just grab this one we'll go ahead and update this one so we've got a new firmware for you weirdly enough why would you guys use dropbox that's kind of weird but i mean okay we'll, we'll, we'll grab that um dropbox download uh please don't ask me to sign up because i'm not going to do that okay show and folder so we don't need to extract this at all so that's just the raw file. Sometimes you might actually have to extract it, but we don't have to in this case. So anyway, let's go back here. <laughs> so you guys know where I'm at. Just anywhere on the page, just the three dots on the top right of the screen, then go advanced, then go, sorry, back, go update, sorry. The three dots, update, select upgrade file, and that's in our downloads folder. Select that one, open, and then upgrade so this will take a few minutes here and there and it's recommended to go ahead and check over all of your settings again so guys that covers the video demo os thank you so much for sending me out an r2 and sorry for taking so long to do the video but some really useful cool stuff that you can do now just to let you guys know um as, as far as being a gamer and setting up all this stuff it is so much easier to just get a doom os like an r1 an r2 an xr 250 an xr 500 an xr 1000 for reference guys, I main an XR500 um, and I, I believe I bought that second hand because I wanted to save a little bit of money. I generally tend to do things like that um, and I update latest firmware and have no issues. I absolutely love it. You can spend a little bit more 
for the more top of the line stuff like you can go out all out and get an xr thousand but generally the only difference is like a better chipset and cpu in the system maybe slightly better wi-fi and better at controlling lots and lots of devices so if you guys don't have like lots and lots of devices in the house you don't have to go all out and get the top of the line stuff and if you don't want like the top of the line wi-fi and stuff like that it should be fairly fine there are lots of other routers out there like the ubiquiti and stuff like edge router x stuff like that you can use it's way more complicated and advanced to actually set up and it's not easy like this and this is why i love doom os so much because it's just so easy and convenient to set up just for gamers so you can just do it once do it right boom done but there are i'm not going to lie there are reports of some other people playing around with like an edge router x and getting slightly better results in some case scenarios but honestly i would just stick with doom os just because it's so much easier. So guys, update your firmware, go ahead and do all the settings again, just check over all of them, make sure they're all good. And like I said, make sure you have all the devices, Wi-Fi and Ethernet connected to your Duma OS router. And make sure you have Wi-Fi turned off on your ISP's modem router, because all you want the ISP's modem router to do is just pass through internet, through one Ethernet port to the Duma OS, and away you go go guys subscribe like and share around i'd appreciate it guys um i have a service over on twitter if you want me to optimize your pc or set any of this up uh, for you if you do have one of these i do have a service over there on there check out my gaming youtube channel i generally uh twitch stream every night i play lots of call of duty and kovacs come check me out and say hi appreciate y'all take care bye